Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Well, today's topic was actually inspired many years ago, and then, of course we get questions every year about this, so I figured we would cover it. Um, I was uh, When I was at Burr Oak Woods Nature Center, I was uh, training a new class of volunteer naturalists there. One of the, uh, the people in the class was a school teacher who was fairly new to the area. She was from Belgium. And she got to, uh, every member of the class had to do a presentation, a mock presentation. We got to pretend to whatever age group she wanted us to be in the audience. And, and they, they, they would do it on a topic. Well, this person decided to do it on birds. And she was using um, a mounted stuffed pair of cardinals that we had there at the Nature Center. And she started out the program. We were supposed to be kindergartners. And she said, how many of you know what the name of these birds are? And somebody in the, in the group raised their hand and said, cardinals. And she said, and yes, evidently they come in two different colors. So that is the inspiration for my program. I often take for granted some of the more basic things about birds. And that there being two different colors of cardinals is one of them. Um, and it is called sexual dimorphism. And that is, you can tell a male from a female by either physical appearance or, or sometimes even sound but mainly physical looks. Cardinals are probably the best example that, that most people know because the backyard uh, is full of them. The female cardinal, which is in uh, the, the brown and tans versus the male cardinal, who is bright red. Why are they two different colors? Many people know the answer to that, but some do not, and that is the males are brighter colored and usually have showier plumage for attracting females. They are the ones who do the singing and quite often have some kind of display and their and their antics to attract a female. And the female, some sing, but not much. Cardinals, female cardinals will sing duets with the males sometime, but for the most part, they're pretty silent and they're more drab looking because they have to sit on the nest. They have to protect the young. And if you're bright red and you're sitting on a nest, you're more easily located and your, your nest is easily uh, fallen victim to predation. So you don't want to be a brightly colored bird having to sit on the nest. So that explains why the, there's the, the color differences in some species. Oh, what are some of the other ones that, were, that are famous for? Oh, waterfowl, mallard ducks. Mallards are, the males are got the shiny green heads. The females are quite drab all over. You know, there and but she has to sit on the nest and she's a ground nester, so she's right on the ground where she's in real danger. So she needs to blend in as much as possible. But not all birds are as easily told apart by their by their looks. How about another bird that we're familiar with in our backyard? How about the downy woodpecker? The downy woodpecker, you can tell them apart. The male has that little patch of red on the back of their head where the female does not have that patch of red on the back of the head. Well, why isn't it, why doesn't the female downy woodpecker need to be, you know, really drab compared to the male? Well, because they're cavity nesters. She's not sitting on top of a nest in a bush where she's more visible. She actually sits on eggs inside of a hole, so being camouflaged to her is not nearly as important. Let's see, who else we have here? Oh, how about chickadees? Can you tell the difference between chickadees? Think about that for a second. Ah, you can't. Even bird banders, people that I've worked with that catch birds in the net, have to measure the tail feathers, or if it's the nesting season, they can blow on the belly and the chest of a of chickadee, and if it's a female, she'll have a, what's called a brood patch there where she sits on the eggs. The males usually don't have that. But again, a chickadee is a cavity nester, so the female doesn't have to be uh, camouflage like, uh, because when you nest inside of a, a structure, then you don't have to worry about being uh, that camouflaged against predators. Let's see, how about a blue jay? Can you tell a male from a female? I can't. I mean, they're very, very subtle differences, but they do nest all out uh, and sitting on a nest and not inside of a cavity. So why isn't a blue jay more camouflaged than that? Well, the answer there, and we had a, a, a good talk about this on our bird hike yesterday, is blue jays have a, a, an interesting coloration advantage 
there are no blue pigments in feathers. So that blue jay is truly not blue. And even when I just said that, I got a look from my producer here. My cameraman looked at me and went, what? <laughs> there is no blue pigment in feathers. The blue color that you see from feathers is com comes from the bending and bouncing of light. The bending of light makes that bird blue. And whenever a blue jay is sitting in dark conditions and shadowy conditions, it, it they look black. And so he, it is an effective camouflage color as long as the nest is built in a real shadowy area, which blue jays almost always do. And so, and then also they're pretty fierce themselves, and so they don't have to worry about a lot of predators. But kind of an interesting uh, uh, cryptic coloration there that you may not think about. Now, there's not, I'm going to go to another bird before I get to that bird. Here's an interesting one. Birds of prey, like bald eagles. Which one's the, the, the male and which one's the female? Well, you can't tell it by plumage. They don't have different color head feathers or different colored uh, bills or anything. But look how much larger the bird is on the right than the bird on the left. This, the bald eagles have what's called reverse sexual dimorphism, in which the females are larger than the males, probably because they have to carry the eggs. And you can tell them, the only way to tell them apart is usually when they're sitting close to each other and you can see the size difference. That's how you can tell male from female. Let's see. Another, and then we get to interesting birds like um, the belted kingfisher. They are another cavity bird. They actually nest in banks and in, in the like they dig into mud banks into rivers and the side of rivers and things so the females are back in there incubating the eggs yet they still are prettier than the males this is a male belted kingfisher he does not have a, their extra red band across the chest where this is a female where she's got their extra reddish color on her back so she's actually more attractive or more colorful than the male which is even taken sexual dimorphism a little step further but the actual most exotic one that, that we get in our area is this guy. This is the king of re re reverse sexual dimorphism in, in the bird world that I know of. This, the females in the phalaro, this is a shorebird. There's three species in the world. We just saw these the other day at Cooley Lake on one of our bird hikes. The females are far more colorful than the males. They have all this reddish in the, ch in the throat and everything, but they take it even further. The females actually fight over males. The females compete for the right to breed with a male, and the male lay, it, it actually sits on the eggs after she lays them and does all the uh, chick rearing. He feeds the babies and raises the babies, and the females go on, kind of like the ruby-throated hummingbird that we talked about last week. The, the female phalaropes go on and fight for more uh, with other females over uh, to get the chance to mess with more uh, other males. So kind of taken to the extreme of the other way. We always think of the males fighting over females and defending territories. Well, in the fowler rope world, it's the opposite. The females do all the fighting and they, they lay the eggs and let the males raise the babies and they go on and live their lives. So it's kind of an interesting uh, twist on sexual dimorphism. So just an interesting topic. Uh, if you like the shows, please share them, like them, send in ideas for future topics. Until then, we'll see you Come by, let's talk birds.